Ryan here playing Farming Simulator 22 and welcome back to Westbridge Hills, our 10 year anniversary revisit here on the map. Also possibly we'll have to see when some might be the last week episodes here on this map as well. Uh, I mean outside of like maybe buying some more equipment and upgrading fields or something. Evan, uh, we own all the factories, uh, we own a couple fields. Yeah, so we'll see once where this uh, week takes us, everyone. We might be moving maps here next week. We'll see once. So uh, with that being said, I wonder if you folks have any uh, suggestions for the next map we should go to, let me know. Throw it down in the comments, Evan. I do have a couple of maps in mind myself, but uh, again, let me know what you folks think. If there's a map you'd like to see, like I said, just uh, again, throw it down below. Anyway, as you can see, got the uh, gravity wagons here filled up on soybeans. So we're going to take that, uh, I guess, probably the flour mill, which I should have probably gone that way instead than this way. Oh, well. Uh, I've been taking all the uh, soybeans here to the food factory, but I just realized the food factory, I think, is actually, like, completely full at this point. Yeah, because I got the other gravity wagon sitting down there, don't I? I don't know if there's anything left in those or not. We'll have to see once here. There might be... Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, there's just a little bit of soybeans left in them yet. So we'll have to bring that over to the flour mill here as well. At least, the, I don't know best place I can think to uh, bring the soybeans outside of just like straight up selling them which might not be a bad idea either everyone I like, just, just sell the soybeans at this point but well, like I said we'll just uh, bring it over to the flour mill here flour mill isn't exactly low yet but it, it is getting down there and then of course uh, this episode everyone uh, once we get this all taken care of we're going to start working on replanting our fields here as well uh, I'm debating too, maybe we'll like a uh, skip a day here just so we can start harvesting the uh, canola too. Not sure yet. We'll see once how that goes. Yeah, we got two fields that are ready to be replanted. And then uh, one field that is probably, I'm guessing, like one day away from harvest. Maybe two. Hard to say. Apparently, yeah, the canola's, canola takes longer to grow than the soybeans. So... And again, as a reminder, if you're maybe uh, a little bit newer to this uh, series, Kevin... A little bit different uh, play style we're using here on this map uh, compared to what I normally would do. Uh, we've got a bunch of, you know, the various features turned off. Uh, so what I'm calling a little bit more of a retro play style here. Yeah, oh, we are on the back one. Okay. And just line up. There we go. Let's get the back one lined up. And we should be able to unload the front one. No. Ah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Pull just a little bit too far ahead there. But, you know, again, when we're only, uh, you know, playing with two stages of fertilizer. Uh, we don't have precision farming turned on. We have weeds turned off. Of course, we got the silly rocks turned off. We're definitely not playing with those turned on. That is definitely off. Uh, we do have lime turned on yet, which I don't remember. Was there lime back in Farming Simulator 15? Or was that 7? That might have been a 17 thing. Something like that. Anyway. Uh, plowing is turned on, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, like I said, uh, a little bit different uh, play style than what I typically do. Typically, again, I'll usually play with precision farming. Uh, usually, we'll play with uh, weeds and stuff like that uh, turned on. Uh, speaking of which, we're also playing with seasons turned off, or seasonal growth, I think it is called, turned off. Uh, so again, I mean, crops still take a specified amount of time to grow, but it doesn't matter when I plant them. You know, I don't have to pay attention to the clock, so to speak, or the calendar, I guess, to actually, like, plant the crops. So I can just, you know, plant them whenever, harvest them whenever. And uh, like I said, it definitely feels like that uh, speeds up gameplay by quite a bit, everyone. You know, when you're not having to pay attention to the calendar, like, okay, got to wait till March, April, May, whatever it might be, to plant this crop, get that planted. Now we got to skip some time until it's ready to harvest. No, just plant the crop. Now we got to skip some time. Got to skip however much time you need to skip uh, to get to harvest time. But then once you're ready to harvest, you just immediately replant the field and skip some time again. So, again, like I said, it feels like a much quicker uh, gameplay. Okay, back to the field. Or actually, you know what? Maybe what I should do. Well, I don't know. It's not really a good way to do this, is there? I've got a little bit of soybeans left in the combine yet. And then also I've got the other gravity wagons over here somewhere that have a little bit of soybeans in them too. I'm going to say I could take that over to the combine, but that's like going completely the wrong way. So, oh, I might as well just take this down to the combine and finish unloading the combine here a minute. And then we'll go grab the gravity wagons and bring that down there a minute. I 
And then also, I believe, as I mentioned, I'm going to maybe have to look at uh, maybe some tractor upgrades here. Especially with some of the hills we have on here. Maybe a combine upgrade, too, because, uh, yeah, for those of you who have seen last episode, that, uh, that Fenton combine we have, uh, I told you folks we should have bought a green one. That's what you get for buying them uh, black combines. The Fent. It's interesting, like, uh, if you look at the Fent tractors, I mean, like, Fent tractors are green, right? Green in the kind of that dark gray. But their combines, they just have them painted black. Now, I think if you go back far enough, and I believe Fent actually had their combines actually like the Fent green color. And, of course, I, I call it a Fent combine. I mean, it's, technically, it's an Agco combine, I guess, right? Uh, Agco Fent. Uh, from my understanding, you can get this in either the Fent, uh, Massey Ferguson. Is it just Fent and Massey Ferguson? Might be. I'm not sure. Not sure if this comes in any other uh, flavors or not, so to speak, right? Wow, quite a few uh, soybeans in the combine yet. Yeah, I didn't realize there was that much in there. There we go, 263 bushel. Yeah, just, uh, just a bit there. Okay, back from whence we came. And uh, maybe while we're on load, Evan, maybe we can uh, look at doing a little uh, shopping here. And as far as shopping goes, Evan, I think we need a bigger tractor here. Again, to pull some of our implements, especially like plows and cultivators, stuff like that. Yeah, the Magnum kind of uh, struggles a little bit with some of those at jobs. What do you expect from a red tractor, right, everyone? Oh, and speaking of our red equipment, yes, there's been some announcements here in the uh, equipment here the last uh, couple of days. Well, a couple of weeks, I guess. Uh, both John Deere, Case, and I guess New Holland. Uh, there's probably some others, too, but... Uh, starting off with uh, John Deere. I believe they've announced their new uh, higher horsepower uh, John Deere. I believe they're 9RX, right? Are they 9Rs? Or is it just 9RX? I'm not exactly sure what uh, form factor those are all coming in, but yep. A lot more horsepower on those uh, tractors now. So yeah, John Deere has their new uh, 9RXs. Uh, Case has announced a new combine. Uh, and for those of you wondering, boy, that kind of looks like the uh, John Deere X9. Yes, you'd be, you'd be very correct on that one, I would say. Uh, the Case AF11, I believe, was the name of it. Oh, you know what? Just the front one actually has some in it. So, yes, the Case AF11 Combine, which I believe they are calling a Class 10 Plus. And then uh, New Holland has also announced a new Combine, uh, and that is the uh, New Holland CR11. Uh, previously, I believe the CR-10 was New Holland's largest combine. Now they got the CR-11. And just like all the rest of the uh, the big combines out there, uh, you know, the John Deere X9, like the Case AF-11, uh, New Holland already had dual rotors, but of course I'm sure the uh, New Holland CR-11 is dual rotor. Uh, the, I'm not sure if the Fent, uh, Fent 10 would fall in that category. I, I don't know. The Fent Ideal? Or the, well, I'll just call it Ideal. We'll call it the Ideal 10. Okay, back to the farm. And we are uh, we're done hauling the... Oh, right, that's right, yeah. Got the second uh, tractor yet with gravity wagons. I noticed I got my uh, tractors and gravity wagons kind of flip-flopped here. I've got the red tractor on the green gravity wagons. I've got the green tractor on the red gravity wagons, don't I? Oh, well. Apparently, this is uh, starting off as a hauling episode here. Wasn't necessarily planning on that. I didn't realize we had this much uh, grain to haul here. Oh, let's see once here. We didn't get to our shopping yet either. We'll have to get to that here in a minute. Speaking of grain, flour mill. Soybean flour. So yeah, we can start uh, doing soybean that... Uh, oh, do I have to activate? I guess I gotta activate that. Okay. That's right. A while back, we went through and uh, deactivated everything that wasn't running. 
Uh, theory was that if it's running and not actually like doing anything, it's costing money. I don't know if that theory is necessarily right or not, but that was the theory, so that's what we did. Okay, we're just going to park that there for now. Let's go, uh, you know what? Um, I suppose we'll get this off the field here as well. Uh, we can actually just bring this over to the, uh, no, actually, you know what? No, I've got the case combine over on the new, uh, canola field there. Seems how the Fent is, uh, not that great at this. Oh, and you know what? It occurs to me, everyone. I don't know if I can fit this in our farmyard like this. This might not fit. I might have to like get a trailer or something. <laughs> See if we go around the other side here. I think this uh, side might be a little bit uh, wider. Obviously, when we bought it, I mean, we just uh, went straight to the field here. Didn't occur to me I might have to uh, get a trailer. Oh, a little too much turning. Oh, so close. So close, that one. You know what? I think we might be able to fix that here. Is there going to be an option for, you know, just, uh, yep. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't realize that was going to remove all of the fence. My bad. Oh, well. Takes care of that problem. Ah, the map object hider mod, Evan. I'm telling you. Can be best friend sometimes. Especially in, uh, sketchy situations like this. We can actually fit this in here, can't we? I mean, folks, that looks like a pretty good spot to park that, if you ask me. Okay. We need... Actually, are we good on water while well, I'm over here? Uh, where is our greenhouse? There it is. Yeah, okay, we're good on water. Always got to, like, remember just to, like, check that whenever we go past the, like, oh, yep, water. Uh, again, as I said before, I mean, I'd like to buy, like, just a cheap tractor to park there. Maybe we'll see if we can uh, do that here a minute. Well, oh, in a minute, once we get this uh, taken care of anyway. 109 bushels of soybeans. I hardly even worth making the trip over here, but soybeans are expensive. We're not just going to throw them away. I'm not sure what the uh, price of soybeans are at the moment, but this is probably somewhere between uh, $1,000 and $1,500, somewhere in there, if I had to guess. I don't exactly keep up with all like the real life prices of crops here, but soybeans usually are always uh, around that uh, ten plus dollars per bushel mark. Usually somewhere between the ten and fifteen. Now maybe they're even higher at the moment. I'm not sure, but oh, Larson's Loyal Livestock. I just noticed that that one. Larson's Loyal Livestock. Huh? Okay. Let's see, is the front one empty? Yep, looks like the front one is empty just a little bit in the rear here. Okay, well, that's unloaded. Let's go uh, visit our tractors here a minute. Like I said, we just need something uh, for unloading the water there. Yeah, I don't know if I want, like, one of those. You know what? Ooh, how about this one? We can get the little Zetor here. A little uh, Zetor Z25K. Anything else interesting, like small, that we want to... Oh, we got... The, oh. Do we have to buy the Bure oven? Remember, oh, with 39000 though. That was the tractor I believe we started Farming Simulator 15 with. It was a cabbed version, and I don't remember the model number on that tractor, but I do believe it was a Bure tractor, right? Just for uh, old time's sake, we might just have to buy that tractor. What do you folks think? I, th I think that might be good. Now oh, we got a Volt. Ah, it's getting up there in price, though. Looking for just something cheap, like, you know, six thousand dollars would be good. I suppose we can spend was that thirty-nine thousand for that tractor? There it is. Yeah, I don't think we need to change anything. We're just gonna go with it like it is. We'll put that on our uh, water tank there, and that tractor's literally that's that 
it's gonna be that tractor's job. You know, thirty-nine thousand dollar tractor just sitting there so we can uh, uh, unload water in there. Okay, back to the farmyard we go. And like I said, we'll see what we can do about uh, getting our fields ready for replanting here. Well, we're heading back to the farm. If I got the tractor lined up straight enough, maybe we can do a little bit more shopping here under large tractors. Uh, what do we have, everyone? What do we have? That is a good question. Lots of, lots of green tractors for some reason. Can't imagine why, you know? Hmm. Well then. Oh, we're getting a little off track on the road there, aren't we? You can just see it through there. Class Luxurian Saddle Track. Yeah, probably not on this map. No. Okay. Look at the tractors, and I think I know what we're going to buy here. Let's get back to the farm here, though, before we uh, crash into something here with this tractor. And then we'll go back to the shop here and uh, make our selection. Oh, look, we do have some eggs there. I think we need to bring some of those to the bakery yet, if I remember uh, correctly. Make sure I try to remember to do that before we uh, do any uh, time skipping here. Okay, back to the shop here. Like I said, large tractors. Yeah, K Steiger Quad Track 620 GPS. There goes a cool $629,000. What do you folks think? I don't know, it's a red tractor, so maybe it's not that cool. Oh, question is, do we need any equipment uh, to pull behind it, too? we got a plow, technically, already, Evelyn, so... Probably sort of good, but... Oh, look, it's the one in the window there. Oh, except that's a 600. This is a 620. Oh, and I'll have to say, for those of you who remember uh, Farming Simulator uh, 2013, Evelyn... This tractor was in Farming Simulator 2013, and I think this one probably looks a little bit better. You know, still has the red paint on it, but oh well. Uh, again, as a reminder here, back in Farming Simulator 2013, that it was when the Westbridge Hills map first came out, and that also was kind of like the Case DLC mod as well. All kinds of Case equipment in that uh, DLC. That was the Titanium DLC there, by the way. Well, it's time to put this uh, tractor to work. I think it might just be out of curiosity. I mean, we got a bigger tractor, bigger equipment now. What do we have under? Oh, there we go. Disc arrows. I'm looking for my disc arrows there. Oh, uh, we got a speed tiller. Horse. Anything bigger? What is this thing? Looks like a little bit of a high-speed disc. Well, I like the, uh, I like the brick under it. I think they, they took that idea from us. Oh, now there's a big one, Evan. The Lizard 2635 section disc. Uh, yes. That is, uh, and wow, the, like, a, a chrome blue there. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of colors. A lot of colors. Can you, uh, oh yeah, you can set brands on this. Um, I think this actually is like a John Deere, isn't it? At least that uh, number anyway makes me think John Deere. I could be wrong on that. Ooh, that's a nice looking uh, sunflower there. Disking, uh, I would say, is probably not that uh, popular anymore, it seems like. That one. Disking has really uh, fallen out of favor here, so to speak. However, you know, instead of disking nowadays, I mean, now we just do high-speed disking, right? So, you know, if we go back here, I'm like... This, this is bad, bad, right? We'll go back here though. Where is it? Okay, I mean, it's John Deere one, but this was good, right? <laughs> I, I, I just had to chuckle. I was like, okay, I mean, it's, it's technically a disc. There is, for those of you who maybe don't know, there is a, kind of a difference there between the discs there. Uh, the high speed discs, for one thing, they're designed to go faster, everyone. 
So usually you're up in that like 10 mile per hour speed working the field. And then also usually you're not working very deep. It's, they're usually quite shallow, a couple inches at the most. Uh, you're just looking to cut the residue up and uh, maybe throw some dirt on top of it, incorporate it into the ground a little bit. And then usually the angles on the disc are not quite as much as they are on a normal disc. So, you know, it's not throwing maybe that dirt quite as far around. It's just, uh, it's kind of staying where it's at, but it might be getting thrown up a little bit, but it's not getting thrown necessarily all over the place like it would with a normal disc. Okay, let's, uh, oh, you know what? Yes, that's the tractor I want, but let's go grab the viewer tractor so I can switch these out here a minute. Again, at least if I remember correctly, I, mean, I think this was one of the starter trackers back in Farming Simulator 2013, wasn't it? Uh, again, not this exact one of them. I believe it was a CAD version. And again, I don't remember what the model number on it was, but... Oh, back in the Farming Simulator 2013 days, that one where you could just uh, put whatever piece of equipment you wanted behind a tractor and pull it. Like, if you wanted to put that uh, great big... Uh, where is it here? Yeah, you, you want to put this great big disc behind this tractor? You could. This tractor would pull it. Obviously, that is not the case anymore. That <laughs> Giants has uh, kind of fixed up their horsepower system a little bit, shall we say. Now you will actually like need a large tractor to pull that disc. This tractor, I have my doubts if it would probably even budge that disc. I'm able to pull it down from the shop, but uh, once you actually put it in the ground, unfold it, probably going to be a whole lot of nope going on there. Oh, that reminds me, while we're over here, should see if I can uh, get the seed tender unloaded so we don't have to have this sitting over here anymore. And do we need any... Ah, we're pretty well full on fertilizer, aren't we? Oh, well. I'm not sure how much is in this thing. Yeah, it looks like there's a fair amount in there. I'll have to remember that next time we need fertilizer at the greenhouse here. Try to finish unloading that. Uh, again, as a reminder, one, it is far cheaper to just buy the fertilizer at the greenhouse than it is for me to, like, go buy it in bulk and put it in there that way. That's just, uh, yeah, nope. Again, the only way if you wanted to save a little bit more money would be to buy the fertilizer by the bag, which, I mean, let's face it, nobody want, wants to do that, so. Okay, there we go. There's our uh, new water tank tractor. And in the case Maxim here, we're going to go throw that in the fertilizer spreader here in a minute. Figure might as well uh, fertilize field 17 before we start uh, disking it. Oh, and this begs the question, what should we plant? I don't think there's really any uh, crops we need for any of our uh, production facilities we got running here at the moment, everyone. You know, again, I mean, this is why I'm kind of saying maybe it's time to uh, wrap it up here for this map this week. We've got a couple more production facilities to buy yet. Oh, maybe we'll see if we can get to that here this episode. Get this going here first, and then we'll start disking. Oh, yeah, not quite on the field yet. You could uh, manually select the field, that one, but I don't know. Easier just to, like, drive on the field, right? At least it seems like it anyway. And then first waypoint, drive the course. I'm going to go hop in the Case Quad track here. And we're going to run this disc up and down the field. Uh, just another little uh, reminder here when it comes to a fertilizer, at least base game. Again, we're not playing with Precision Farm, that one base game need to make sure you have something in between your fertilizer applications so in this case we're going to have a disking operation in between those oh i think i better shift that over just a little bit there we go again if you just put fertilizer on fertilizer oven 
the second application of fertilizer won't count. So in this case, the second application of fertilizer would be from the planter. So we're putting fertilizer down. When we go to plant down, the planter will also put fertilizer down. And again, that fertilizer will not count. You will literally just waste that fertilizer if you do that. Ask me how I know. Obviously, even though I know that, I'm mean, going to have on, on occasion accidentally done that, so. Yeah, it seems like this uh, tractor isn't struggling to uh, pull this disc here at all. I think the uh, Magnum usually pulled this disc fairly well as well. It's usually the plow that always gave us the uh, trouble here. Oh, what you doing there, uh, Maxim Tractor? You should have no problem keeping up with us here. We're only, what, a fraction of the uh, spreader's width, so... I thought I'd like to think we had some intelligence on our side here. <laughs> Looking at what uh, Course Play's doing there. That might be an option you can actually change, Evan, rather than, like, turning on field. Just, uh, you know, include the outside port of the field to turn around as well if needed. Again, at least on this map, Evan, usually there's at least uh, two ends of the field that are open on either end. So the need for headlands is drastically reduced. Another thing that's probably changed a little bit here since Farming Simulator 2013, right? Okay, while we're going up and down the field, Evan, we've got, uh, like I mentioned here a moment ago, two more factories. Oh, you know what? I can't buy these factories unless I go down. Oh, you know what? Let's go down there. We're going to go visit the factory. Wrong screen to visit the factory with. There we go. That's just the unload spot. Timber time would work, huh? Okay, well, what do we got there, timber time? Back here. Ah, here we go. That's what we're looking for. $60,000. Yeah, only 60000 And then we have the spinnery over here as well. As a reminder, I do have a little bit of wool of one. What this side? Oh, that's just money. Ah, here we go. Building has been purchased. Ah, oh, that's the office, huh? It's cool, cool. <laughs> okay, then. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I wouldn't, unless I missed something here. Well, okay. Technically, one factory we don't own, and that is the biogas plant. We own all the factories, then, here at this point. Everyone, those were the last two factories. And while we're disking here, we'll go check those out in the menu here just to see once, uh, what kind of products are we looking at here. So, fabric. Yeah, we need wool. Oh, and guess what? We need pallets, too, yet. Huh, who would have guessed? And we also need cotton. Ah, okay. We well, might just buy that for now. And then the furniture. So, oh, we need wood here as well. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Well, planks and long planks. We are making those at the uh, sawmill oven. So we just need to uh, change this from selling to distributing. Same thing with the long planks there as well. That'll, that should send the long planks and the regular planks down to the woodworking there. And then we'll just have to, like I said, buy a little bit of wood. But yeah, not exactly the cheapest, but... Okay, well, I've been looking at the time here. Looks like it is about time to wrap it up here for this episode. So on that note, you folks have any comments and or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, Evan, thanks for watching. Until next time.